Hello everyone, I'm Charlie Webster here. I hope you're all keeping well and safe. Now I'm really pleased to be joined by Doncaster Rovers and twice named PFA Community Player of the Year, Matty Blair. I know it's just us two from our home, so I'll give you a clap. I'll, I'll join in as well then. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we might as well Thank start away. This is for the EFL and Mind Inside the Mind of Series for Mental Health Awareness Week. Uh, Matty, where are you at the moment? I am currently in my living room, just obviously with the lockdown, everything else, just trying to enjoy it as much as I can, spending a lot of time with the family, which is the, which I've realised is the most important thing. So yeah, just in my living room at the moment, just chilling out. Because you've got a three-year-old as well, so how's it been? Yeah, he's three, he'll be three at the end of this month. Um, it's been brilliant. I, I know, so we, we've actually, this is going to sound really bad, but we we as a family have created a little bubble for ourselves and you know obviously our three-year-old boy doesn't really know much what's going on we're, we're trying to explain to him why he can't see other family members why he can't go and do certain activities that he loves to do but we're, we're using it as a positive to, to think that me me in football i'd never would get this time normally to spend so much time with him at home um and yeah we're just trying to enjoy it as much as we can even though we know how bad and how serious this virus is. So um, just trying to keep it as positive as possible. Do you think that's one of the best ways to cope though? Because I can relate a lot to that. You know, too much news is just really anxiety provoking. And it's almost like, right, you've got to narrow it down to day by day rather than constantly mm -hmm. looking at, at long term. Yeah, no, I yeah, totally agree. I, well, the only news that we sort of keep on top on is um, the daily briefing at five o'clock. Other than that, so we just we check, turn it on, we, we see five, ten minutes of it, we turn it off, and then we're back to, well, probably Disney, Cars, whatever, hide and seek, whatever we're into at the moment. So, but yeah, other than that, um, we, like I said, are very much trying to just enjoy the time we're getting together rather than worrying about anything else that could potentially be happening, which, like I say, we know it's happening, we know it's bad, but for our point of view, we're just trying to keep it, like I said, as positive as possible. How have you found missing football? Have you missed football? Yeah, oh yeah, I've missed it quite a lot. But again, I'll, I'll go back to saying, I miss football a lot, but I'm enjoying spending time with Archie a lot more. And when, when you sort of weigh up the option, weigh up, the sort of options yes I miss football and yes at times I'm thinking god I'd love just to go and have a kick about or mm -hmm. get back to training or certainly get involved in a game and get that adrenaline in again but if that was to take away time I'm spending with him and my wife at the moment then I would say mm, well maybe not so yes I'm missing it but the time I'm getting doing something else is, is far greater than missing football and has that made you think differently then because it's almost like you're kind of reflecting uh it's making me feel different it's making me feel differently for the moment we're in now because i i can't we're not allowed to go and play i can't do anything about that um when the the city lockdowns lifted and ho hopefully sooner or later the coronavirus is, is gone and people get back to normal lives whether i think differently again i don't know but like you said for day to day i'm very much for the here and now rather than thinking like, when are we back to football? When are we back to football? When are we back to football? Just, just enjoying the moment as much as you can in such a negative situation we find ourselves in. Yeah, to be honest, I can really, I, I feel exactly the same. I've kind of switched it. to be, At the beginning, I was doing that. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. And then now I was like, right, okay, turn it completely back around and just focus on what the now is. And what yeah. about, because I know how close you are to, to Doncaster Rovers, to your club and to the players and to the fans so what's yeah. contact been like and have you missed that camaraderie i know you said how important it is to to be with your family right now yeah no i'll um i'm in obviously a big whatsapp group with all the lads and every now and again we all flare up and just have the banter and everything else whatever yeah <laughs> and i've always said to them lads if you need anything i'm always trying to be a support offer help wherever i can so that side of it but the staff as well um Obviously, we've been furloughed now, and technically, it's like we're not allowed to talk, or you know, I'm not allowed. Well, I am allowed to talk to them, but we're not allowed to talk about work as such. So I'm making more of an effort now to speak to the staff to make sure that they're okay and their families are safe and everything is is well and good. And obviously, I'm a part of the Fit Rovers project. I spoke with uh, Nick, who runs the, the department during the week, 
uh, sorry, during last week, and um, just made sure that those men and the women are, are, are staying well and active as well. Because if one or two weren't, then I would feel a bit of responsibility, maybe just to give them a phone call and just ask how they are and just take it from there. So it's just it, like you say, it's just trying to be a, just that person that can offer support wherever needed. Mm. I've got a couple of questions um, from fans, if you don't mind me asking you about, about oh, now, on, and then we'll yeah. go further into things. So yeah. um, how have players, especially those isolating alone, managed to keep themselves motivated to get up and get on? I know you're with your family, but um, you know, I'm sure there's a few players that are living on their own. Um, well, I'm, there's one or two lads I know that are living on their own that are saying that they want to get back to normality with football and everything else. Um, but for what I keep telling them is that you just enjoy the break now, get your rest in now because football doesn't give you this. It's never given me this before. It doesn't ever do it. These are young lads who are hopefully going to have football careers for 10, 15 years. Just, just, we take your rest, keep keep your work going because you should always keep your sort of mental, not sorry, keep your physical well being going to help your mental well being. But um, don't do don't basically don't be an idiot. Just just enjoy the sort of break the period and reflect and plan for life after football if you have to. Um, obviously, these young lads. I was one of them thinking you you're, you're going to stay in football forever, blah de blah. But realistically, that's not going to happen. It, well, it's not going to happen. Um, so just, just yeah, take a, take this time now to reflect on what's important in your life and make changes if you have to. And another one has been, how do you feel on a daily basis in lockdown? Before you answer, I think this is an interesting question because some of the comments I've been getting is, oh God, I had a you know really up and down week. And I'm like, but that's normal. I think it's really yeah, it is, important yeah. to say that. It's not yeah. I don't know anybody that's up every day during this and actually in life in general. Yeah, oh no, totally agree. I've I've had my moments and my, I know me and my wife have had our moments where we bicker and argue and you know, we're fortunate enough to to sort of live in live in a house that that obviously has a stair, so once someone can go upstairs, someone can go downstairs, even if it's half an hour just to chill out. Um, and yeah, wait. Just there, there's so many three-year-old. Anyone that's got a like a, a baby, you can know that. Yes, they're brilliant and wonderful, but they can also get a little bit sort of frustrating at times. I'll use, yeah, I won't. I'll keep it clean. Um, but yeah, no, I totally agree. That yeah, I've had my moments where in, during the day even I felt very down and low, and then I've had my moments where I'm feeling on on cloud nine and feeling great. So. For the, for the people that ask how I am, oh, that's my answer as well. The, the, when I, but I think for me, I, I can now sort of understand and know when I'm feeling a bit down and a bit down and low, maybe take myself away because then I'm not implementing anything on my wife. I'm not, I'm not ruining her mood, spirit, energy levels, whatever it may be. Um, and then I can just get myself back into it and come back and then carry on the day as normal. Would you say that it, that's maybe one of the most important things is we're all, we're all going to feel low at points and, yeah. and some of us more than others. Is it mm -hmm. more about recognising it? Yeah, I think so. I think if you, if you realise where you're at, where you're at and you, and you realise that actually I've had a good night's sleep but I feel fatigued. Well, why, why is that? I, I, I am getting very stressed out uh, the smallest, the smallest things that actually don't matter at all. When you when you come to like circumstances, like for example, uh, spilling a glass of water on the floor, you get irate about it. Why? Why am I getting irate? It's just a bit of water. It can be cleared up with a cloth or a tea towel, whatever. And and then so when you start realizing them things, you can then take your well, I'll find myself take myself just out for out the way for a couple of minutes, sort sort myself out as such as in like I'll have a couple of deep breaths and just calm myself down and everything else then I go back and to, to what I was doing before and everything's fine yeah it's almost like those behaviors tell you okay I'm not okay I need to go yeah. check in with myself and what about motivation during this time because obviously you're still training and a lot of people are exercising 
yeah. No, motivation has always been there for me personally. I I find it if so. Usually, what I would do is say, say a normal season, end of season, I'll have a couple of weeks off, and then I'll find myself getting very lethargic, very slumpy, you know, very like miserable, and like oh, I, I need to. I need to do something now because my body needs to keep going. And I find exercise helps me both physically, obviously, and mentally as well to, to, to keep energy levels high just throughout the day. So I can just be a positive, positive influence on the people that I'm coming into contact with. So for motivation for me, if I don't do it, that I find myself in a lot worse position. So I'll always try and do something. It might not be every day, but I'll always try and do something twice a week probably minimum to to hopefully like counteract that negative influ that negative vibes that come in when you don't do it oh honestly i agree i don't know where i'd be without going for a run yeah yeah totally <laughs> i probably agree. wouldn't be smiling down the lens at you right now <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, yeah. i'll keep, uh, keep running and keep smiling yeah, i will <laughs> and where did it all start for you because i know i mean we have spoken before and um, i remember interviewing you last year on BBC Five Live, and you're such a, a fantastic voice um, for speaking out about mental health and an advocate within your own community and club. But where did it all start for you? I wonder if you could take us back. Um, so yeah, well, obviously, mental health has been around for now for years and years, and people have been trying to bang the drum on on open so people can speak about it for for a long time. But for me personally, it was obviously 2017 when my brother died. Um, July tw July 29, 2017. Now, I'd never, I'd never experienced grief. I'd never experienced anything of the sort of what I was going through in terms of trying. So basically, the best way to put it is I tried my hardest to live my life. I've just had a newborn baby at this point as well. So Archie was born in May, Ross died in July. And I tried my hardest to put things back to normal get everything back to normal. You know, I liked my life before Ross died and, you know, Ross has died, massive impact on my life, but I want my life back to how it was. But Ross was such an impact on my life, I couldn't. How could I? My, my older brother, who obviously I'd known all my life, is now gone. And um, I was trying to live the life that I was living when he was here, which... For me, when I when I, I I openly hold my hands up, I I went to seek some help, speak speak to somebody, a counsellor, to, and it was her that said it to me. Said you you now are on a completely different path in life. Go down that path. Stop trying to live the walk the path you were walking. And when I realised oh, that's what I was doing, I could then understand a lot more and and digest grief a lot more, digest my feelings a lot better, and and understand my body a hell of a lot better to to really sort of come back to my attitude and, and everything before Ross died and now after him. Complete new outlook on life, but still the same person of the the attributes that my parents drilled into me as a kid. It's interesting, Matty, something you just said. You said, I hold my hands up when you talked about seeking help. Do you think yeah. subliminally and subconsciously there's still something there about, oh, can you say you've reached out for help? Not, not, well, I probably, you know, I didn't even realise I said that. Not for me personally, because I'm more than happy to express any part of feelings now because I know how important it is. But there, there probably is a, still a taboo in the subject of seeking help, going to seek help. If you, if you say you're going to seek help, does that make you weak? And everything else so I didn't even realize I'd done that but probably there was something that then just went subconsciously just made me do it but no for me personally it's not but yeah I, I, it, I would like to think that we're now coming into the generations of seeking help and, and speaking becomes the norm rather than looked upon in a weak minded me mentality or or scared whatever you, whatever you want to call it what would you say to anybody that's recognized that what you've just said and they're like, what well, does it mean I'm weak because I've got to be strong. I've got to be independent or are people going to judge me? Um, I'd say, well, yeah, I'd say that that's what I think people think. If I go and seek help, does it make me weak or do I have to be this 
I'm going to use a, the male form here. Do I have to be this macho man, you know, protect my family, this, that, and the blah, blah, blah. So I'm not going to say anything. Now, if you're struggling, then it take, it, you become more of a man by going to admit and speak and, and make yourself known that you, you're struggling and your family and everybody around can help and support you do that and, and everything else. All I'd say is that just because you go and see a counsellor doesn't necessarily mean you are going to make yourself better. You know, I, I was always, I, I was told as well that, well, I always thought that the counsellor didn't make me better. I made myself better, which empowers me a lot more because I, I, I did do it myself. The counsellor was there to help me. Brilliant. My wife, superb, absolutely amazing. Family, quality, Archie, legend. Um, but I, I still went through the griefing process myself and, and, and came through it myself with the help of others. And to know that you do it yourself is also like a, a, its own little achievement, well, big achievement, really, um, to, to, to understand what mental health is. I couldn't agree with you more. And I think it's really important what you just said, because I think sometimes yeah. I myself too, is like, well, they're going to make it all better. And actually mm. it's about learning about you and about yeah. how to cope with those overwhelming emotions, which inevitably are going to happen because it's part yeah. of who we are. What yeah. behaviors did how you were feeling manifest in itself when, you know, you first, felt something wasn't quite right after your brother's so death. it it was it was a bit of a, a scary a scary one really but very fortunate again um because i was trying to like i said ross died july 29th football season started the week after now the football season obviously we just got promoted as well so we we're in league one darren ferguson gavin strachan couldn't speak highly enough of them that my manager and assistant at the time they basically fathered me in the football world through the time and it was it was superb. But I was still obviously trying to live and it took me till about October time, James Coppinger, I had a chat with him, it took me till about then to realise actually I wasn't quite right. Um, is I was out on a dog walk one morning in Doncaster and on dog walks, I don't know if you've got a dog or whatever, but you get to know the same sort of people that you walk with at the same sort of time. And we became friends with a couple who played football. For, the lad played football for Donny. And he was out with his missus walking the dog. I was out with mine. Standing, having a chat, two dogs playing. All of a sudden, bosh, like, I've hit the floor. I've fainted. I've completely gone. I'm looking up and I see Liam, his name was Liam, over me. Like, Matty, you okay? You okay? I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I didn't know what happened. Didn't have a clue what happened. Walked home with the dog. Walked home. Got myself ready for training. Mrs. came running in. Grabbed the car keys. You're not going anywhere. Just had a phone call from Liam's girlfriend to say um, to say that you'd, you'd fainted and you like you weren't right. I was. I had no clue what. Like, had no clue what happened. Right. So when I got everything checked out, this, that, and the other, blah, 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 and um, like all, all your sort of brain scans, your your heart, everything got checked out. Uh, everything fine there was there wasn't an answer for it and what i'd done is i'd run myself so, into the so just to take you back to it, it was almost like everything everything was looked at from a physical point of view is that right so it was it, almost it was like right, what's wrong yeah yeah no it was at first yeah it randomly just fainted in the middle of a field walking a dog yeah what like what on earth happened so physically checked over everything came back brilliant actually like actually pretty happy with it um and then, and then Darren Ferguson pulled me into his office and said, right, we need to have a chat. We need this, that, and the other. I'd, I'd been speaking, like I say, to James Coppinger and other people. And then we, we went and se seeked help. And that's when I started to become better. But I'd basically suppressed myself for three months it, it, to thinking that my, I was trying to, like I said, trying to live my life before um, Ross died. And, and it become too much. It overwhelmed me my, and my body, my body basically told me to no you're not right you're not well and then it was from that moment on I went to sort myself out mentally and what were the first steps then when you said sort yourself out mentally and so yeah was so, it hard yeah. to maybe accept was it easy for you to accept oh hang on this is 
this is because I need help mentally. Okay. And yeah. Like I um, no, it, it would. To be honest, the shock of fainting, which obviously that is a big thing to happen to anybody. Like I'm, I was 28 at the time, physically in good condition, playing football. We were in. I want to. I want to say this end of middle to end of October, something somewhere around that sort of time. You know, season season was well underway. Played games, fit. All of a sudden, just just hitting the deck. It it it, it shouldn't happen. And so, obviously, I knew then that something needed to happen myself. Like I knew something wasn't right myself. So I was. I'm all up for making sure that everyone's okay. I've got. Then I realised. Well, it's time to make sure I'm okay. And I, I took a bit of time to take care of myself, look after myself, talk to people, understand, compl- try and, I don't, no one I don't think will ever completely understand, but really try and understand that it, it's, it's all right to have, like we said, the days where you're feeling down and low and, and, then, and then come back from it and, and be a positive energy for the rest of the day, like I've said before. And when you first went to see the counsellor, yeah. like, can you maybe describe some of the coping mechanisms they implemented? I think it was, was it, was it a female counsellor? And I think I read a great story that it was in your old, your mum's old house or something. And, well, yeah, I th- I, what, what I would say is that um, I do strongly believe that when you, if people go and seek help through yeah. counselling or whatever it may be, um, that you do your research before and, and you sort of select the right one because counseling is so many different ways and methods and, and everything else. But I did seek great comfort because the house I went to was the house that my mom was brought up in as a child. So her whole childhood, she lived in this house that now there was a counselor that bought it off my grandparents and she'd lived there since. So I went into, I walked into the house where basically my mom was a little girl grew up her whole life and then moved when she moved went well I think my mom yeah she went to uni and moved out then. Um but yeah so that gave me comfort. I was sitting in a room probably uh, my mum as a little girl probably I don't know if she was like yeah she'd probably be stricter back then with drawing on the walls and all what everything <laughs> now but yeah and that just gave me great comfort in itself. Yeah I can imagine. So and then and then yeah myself and, and the lady that helped me was uh we we we, we had a few sessions together of just talking and, and crying and everything you can think of um, to sort of like help my mindset. Um, and then after I think it was six to, six to eight sessions, we um, she said, "Do you want to carry on?" And I was like, "I'm going to try my own. I'll try now to sort of um, carry on and, and and see how I get on." And she was like, "Okay, I'm always here if you need me," and I always had that support as well. How much do you think? learning about more about yourself and your own mental health has helped impact you now and maybe things outside of football like your personal life oh like i say it's it's, it's changed every near enough everything it's changed probably sort of how i even parent now and the the relationship i have with my wife even and uh, we i understand now that if she ever gets a little bit irate at some things I do then I'll just say right okay well you you know like stop there we'll just have a moment to ourselves and we'll come back and we'll continue the conversation or whatever it may be you know obviously and then even parenting with Archie now it's very much I want to make sure that he understands everything he's doing and everything and this this, the psychological effect that's uh, that could impact him with certain things going on that I want to make sure doesn't happen when he starts growing up and everything else. Can you like maybe quantify or give any specific bits of advice about coping mechanisms? Because the one thing you said throughout so far is that you've, you recognize when you're not feeling okay and then you, you take yourself out of the situation, but what were some of the tools maybe that you used um, to help yeah, like now, it, well, it, maybe during the time. I, I think it, it's just trying to work what's sort of best for you. See, for me, like I, I can, I, I can sort of 
it, it's not instant. It's not like I, if I'm feeling minging now, I can go into the other room for two minutes and then come back and, <laughs> and then uh, go, oh, 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 yeah, magic oh, ones. Hi, oh, 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 Charlie, how are you doing? Yeah, nice yeah, to see yeah. you and all that. Yeah, no, it's not, it's none of that. But I think I'm trying to get to a point where if you can pick it up early enough, it probably does make it a little bit easier. But for me, I just find that even if it's closing your eyes for five minutes and um, just allowing it, it there's, there's a thing called the bubble effect, which is sit down or you lie down, whatever, you close your eyes and you just let your mind just drift completely in, into sort of like wherever it needs to go and just allow your, your, your feelings, your body just to sort of like float and make you feel like you're in a bubble. And then when you're ready to sort of like, wake up or whatever come round, whatever it is however you describe it that 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 for me i find quite effective but there, there are many different things that you can that you can implement as long as obviously you keep yourself safe and well doing them yeah i like that one because it also shows like slows your biology down as well everything yeah you slow yeah. You, you can slow your breathing down you can make your breaths longer you can you can make your breath faster if it helps and really like like start <laughs> go on do it no no thank you why not <laughs> yeah that, that's just gonna make me look silly but mm. no, there's, there's just obviously certain things that can be done um taking a long walk go 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 out for a long walk and just get the fresh air um put um, put your favorite song on and just go absolutely bananas in your kitchen to your favorite song for three and a half minutes and whoever's watching so what let the world see that you're having the best dance you can have for three and a half minutes or whatever your song is for that moment and and just just sort of enjoy life rather than letting it sort of suppress you yeah they're really good things to for people to actually go and hold on and do because i think sometimes it's not as simple as yeah go and yeah Joy, I think, you know <laughs> i think yeah the, the, we've got certainly a, there's the stigma of mental health i believe is breaking and people are talking about it anymore but i think that also people so you you get told obviously your gp is a very good person to go and speak to but your gp ever i see always see a gp as somebody that will fix you physically as in like okay i'm not feeling too well there's some antibiotics chest infection there's your antibiotics mm -hmm sound five days i feel great so i just think that understanding your own like you said understanding your own body and knowing you can make yourself better is such a powerful tool to have going forward um with with things that happen later on in life and your anxieties and your depressions and everything that you feel just you can help yourself and i know like some of this you've then tried to implement elsewhere and worked with Doncaster Rovers and the players and the fans and you're an on yeah. your side champion as well can you talk us through some of the work that you've been doing because you know what you've done isn't just about your own self as an individual it's right okay how can I also help others understand their own mental health and get help yeah well um, so I could say my um I, I always think that I in fact let me start again I actually really enjoy doing you sort of they're called player appearances where you, you, as, as a representative of Doncaster Rovers Football Club, a player will go into the community to show their support for whatever that, that basically appearance you're going to do is. Yeah. Um, and I, I always say that I, when I go, I want to try and learn something, basically, because I'm going into a community, I'm going into a, a, a support network, whatever it may be, and I don't really know much about that topic. I'm, I'm just a, a footballer going in. So I really make an effort to interact with people, to talk to these people, to, to give them the time that they deserve because they, they're, I'm there to support them as well, to give them the time they deserve, but then also to learn from them. And throughout my sort of life, I pick up things from people that I like and I discard things from people that I don't like. And I try and put it all together to make, a, the, I always said, the best version of me. And, and that is something that I'll continue to do with Doncaster, certainly in the community between the relationships we have now. It, 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 we've, we've grown a bond that is probably unbreakable in regard to my life after football. I'll still speak to people at Doncaster that have nothing to do with the football side, but the, all the community side. 
Um, obviously, I'm the Fit Rovers ambassador. I've done that for a few years now. Um, and I've really got to get in close contact with the men and the women now that are on the courses. And they probably don't see me as Matty Blair, the footballer anymore, which I don't want. I'm not Matty Blair, the footballer. I'm just a normal person doing a wicked job. It's, it's everyone's dream. It's, it's a job, but it's everyone's dream. I'm doing it on foot. Uh, first and foremost, like everybody else, I've got no other rights to anything that yourself, anyone's got. And then that's, for me, is, is the most important thing. It is funny, isn't it? Because sometimes there's that conversation, and I've noticed it a lot recently, about money all the time when it's around football. And, it, and it's really important that, that it isn't in a way, because how can we understand mental health when we relate money to mental health as if, well, if, oh, well, they have money. So how can they have, you know, problems yeah. with mental health? Or how can they feel down? Or how can they suffer or feel lonely? Yeah. Well, money, uh, the saying, obviously, money is the root of all evil, which couldn't be more true. That money, for, uh, for me, obviously, it can make some people happy, obviously. That's their, their life, their choices and everything else. But for me, certainly with, with what I've been through with losing my brother and, and and even lockdown now, again, getting another sort of realisation that family is the most important thing. Money is just an object that will come and go. And yeah, I just don't see money be, being important in any part of life whatsoever. And what about your work? I did mention it in the other question that I asked you about. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You work with... No, don't be sorry. I just didn't want you to think I was repeating questions I'm asking you. Um, you're an on-your-side champion. I know you're doing a lot of work yeah. with EFL and Mind. So I thought it'd be interesting if you could talk to us about some of the work you've done with Mind and the work Mind do. Yeah, so obviously Mind is a, a, a company that obviously help in, in mental health and set up a partnership with the EFL in 2018. And I believe they've just extended it now, I want to say to 2022. Um, but so that is to obviously bring a partnership that football has so much effect on people's lives. And the fact that now the EFL and Mind have come together, the, um, so the EFL have had the impact on people's lives. Mind joining that partnership now is brilliant because Mind will also then be able to benefit, will be able to crack in, well, so crack in, they'll be able to support anybody that anybody from the footballing community that has their mental health issues as well. So that's obviously such a massive one. Um, obviously, Mind have the, the squiggle on the back of their sh on the back of every player's shirt and their, their logo embedded in the numbers. Um, and so for me personally, what I've been doing is so supporting mine wherever I can. Mind and Doncaster, local Mind and Doncaster have developed a good communication network where every month or six weeks, they're allowed to come to the stadium to have a social cafe, which I've been to a few now, where it's just as simple as a cup of tea, piece of cake and a chat. But Mind are bringing their local helpers their their, their their mental health the people that need the, the support they're bringing them in they're getting to have a chat with people at the football club um, there's everybody drops by just to say hello they're getting to look around the stadium have a look at the pitch i know they do a lot of craft days and work days activity days so there, there's lots and lots of that are going on and and will continue to go on to, to help anybody who who may be struggling with mental health problems and we know how important, you know, we're all football fans. I presume you are, even though yeah. you're a player. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And football is so much more than just the competition. It's that camaraderie. It's the, sometimes it's the only time people have that sense of community. What would you say to football fans out there now that are really missing it? Um... There's, I understand what you're completely saying. In yes, it's a generation thing. I've got friends who have been going to see Coventry City play football with their dads and their grandparents for year for their whole lives, so years and years and years. And you can't get that anywhere else. That is some that is time spent as a family that is so important to these people. It's brilliant. What I, the only thing I would say is though that we're in such a, a fragile situation that whatever happens in football just be grateful be mindful and be well 
that you have your club to support next season. It, this, it, I think, it's such a serious, such a serious subject that football. If it was to play, if it was to not play, I, I just hope that every football club comes through this okay and financially well. That these, that the communities within the people, the communities won't lose their football clubs, like what we saw with Berry at the start of the season. Yeah. If, if, if football doesn't lose a football club. I think it's a massive success for football. And whether, I don't know how long that'll take or whatever, but as that is for me is the, the ultimate bottom line that you cannot afford to lose one club. Yeah. I could chat to you all day, Matty. Um, no, but I no, do you want to ask yeah. you <laughs> one <laughs> final question. I, I, would, I would get on your nerves after about, well, it's probably been 20 minutes, but after a while, I would get on your nerves. Trust me. I wonder who would break first, though. I reckon I could get on your nerves too. Um, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so what I honestly I wanted to add, to end on it on a really serious question. Um yeah. there is a lot of people that really are desperately struggling out there uh, mentally with depression, with anxiety, and just this really overwhelming uncertainty that we're living in. What would your message be to them? Um well obviously I would I would say to them. For, I, I can only I can only really say from my experiences, but obviously try to understand how you're feeling first. Try and understand why you might be feeling the way you are. Then, once you sort of can do that, you can then sort of begin to help yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be give yourself give yourself moments throughout the day that you need to take you for me you need to take your break whatever works for you just really try and be in touch with your your feelings and your emotions and and everything else and listen to your body and it's it's very hard to, to do but once you can start to do that you will then start to really be able to benefit more from from being healthier being happier and everything else and then all of it it's like a circle that all of it goes hand in hand with each other. Mm. There's, there's, always, there's always someone that you can seek help with. If you, you are really struggling, you can always, most of the people have the internet, go on the internet and, and probably Google a number to phone. Um, there'll always be people to help that way. And just know that you're not sort of alone. The, the people next next door to you that might look like they're living the healthiest life, the happiest life because they're in the garden 24 seven and that you, they might not be when they go inside. So just don't compare yourself to anybody. Just look, look to yourself and look after the people that are closest to you and, and, and stay connected and strong as a unit, but individually and as a unit within the people that mean the most to you. And then yeah, the rest you. of the, the rest of the world is, is you can't help can't anyone. control so, it can you, well, yeah, you can, no, yeah. exactly yeah yeah thanks that's a really good message and i also do want to ask you a more specific one too because there is also a lot of people going through a lot of grief right now and that's something you've really strongly yeah. experienced it can be heartbreaking debilitating um have you got any specific advice for how to cope with grief at the moment well obviously with, with you saying yeah the, the grief the grief again can can be stronger or weaker in certain situations everything else it, it is very individual but it it would be very hard for the people certainly that have lost their, their loved ones in in this pandemic and then not been able to even have a funeral for them or anything else but what i would say is that for, for them people for just anybody in general that one day one day that this pandemic will end it will finish and then that can be the day that you say sort of farewell to your loved ones properly you, you, you you're going to do it now anyway because it, it's, that's just natural human being life but you you there there, will, there is a light at the end of what we're going through you just got to sort of keep going day by day like what we said in this interview day by day and understand everything day by day and then eventually you'll get to the point where you, you'll be happy and, and, and you will get yourself back to normal. And then 
if that soon, if that's before the pandemic finishes, great. If it's after the pandemic finishes and it takes years, it took me a good few years to really understand my emotions. I still don't fully understand them now. I'll, I'll say that. Um, but just, just day by day, bit by bit, whatever it is, just understand how, how, how the, your, your own personal body and your mind works. Thank you. And thanks so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Not it's been great chatting to you thank you and also remember i'll say and i'm sure you are uh, going to say it as well matty that if you need any more help or advice that you can go to mind.org.uk and where there's lots of different tools and help on their web on mind's website um, but yeah thank you um, and also i'm sure people can reach out to you can't they as well on social media of course yeah of course uh, again i'm i'm on near enough every platform i'm not on instagram actually i don't really understand that one but I'm, um, but yeah no i'm on any platform that all right you're on twitter somebody in, yeah that'll do yeah i'm I'll on do. twitter yeah so yeah and, and and i'll try and and help wherever i can as well just like i'm sure yourself would and, and, and certainly anybody at mind or any any anybody i'm sure that we're all we're all sort of trying to pull through this together yeah thanks so much no problem thanks for having and me take care and we look forward yeah, to seeing you play again thank you very much right take care yourself